all these high profile cyber attacks that never stops happening. So many different companies, corporations get hacked. The key question is, how do the hackers do it? What's happening behind the scene that allows them to succeed in their craft, in their techniques, to get all of our usernames and passwords? Well, hello there. My name is Mr. Hackaloy, or that's my internet moniker, not my real name. And of course, I find that a very fascinating internet moniker. So let's think about what can we do to really understand what happens behind the scene for the hackers. So the first thing you want to think about is the data. What information are being lost as part of all these different data breaches? So in terms of data breaches, you have, say, for example, your name, or right? you have addresses, you have something that's really, really useful, which is password that allow us to verify who we are in order to log into a site and many other different details right here. And the next question is, where are all this data stored? And how do hackers gain access to them? And all these data are stored in computers, gigantic computers in what we call data centers, which are literally rolls and rolls and rolls of computers that are storing millions or hundreds of millions and sometimes even billions of records. And as a result of that, this is the crown jewel that the hackers are going to go after. So now then, your best friend, Mr. Hacker Loy on the left, is going to think about, okay, I am able to publicly access into those websites, into those banking applications, and so on and so forth. Now, they ask me for the typical stuff in order to gain access to things. So it could be your username, your password, and all of those information. But the thing is, I do not have in my possession any of those data. So what the hackers will do then is to think about what are the expected security controls that will then allow them to circumvent those controls. Think creatively, ways of bypassing logically a lot of these mechanisms that are in place to safeguard all of those data. So this is the part where the hackers have to excel at. The second option that we have is for the hacker to go directly to the user's device. So the device can be a mobile device, it could be a laptop, or it could even be your home desktop, where it could be containing a lot of all these different type of important information that we were just discussing about earlier. Your usernames, your passwords, your credit card information, they are likewise stored in these devices. And this is the part where the hackers would then go after all these devices directly and be able to gain access to those critical data. And this is the part where it gets really exciting. And what we really want to achieve here is to think about all the different type of instructions that you can send to a computer to tell the computer what to do. And once you embed that instruction into a file, the user clicks, open up the file, that's it, it's game over. So for example, over here, I'm in front of a hacking computer. This is called Kali Linux and it is used in a lot of different types of hackers operations. And what we can do here is to think about how can we host a malicious file that can then be provided access to those consumer devices or even any of those websites you're targeting. And we'll be getting help from one of this file called nc.exe. So this is going to be a malicious file that we will host. So once the user downloads the file, they execute on it, that's it, all right? So what we can do here is we can enter CP, which is to copy USR share Windows dash resources binaries followed by nc.exe to var www.html nc.exe. So what this does for us is that it allows us to make this file available either across the internet or within the local network so that the computer is able to access and download this file. And in order to start the hosting, what we can do here is enter, say, super user do systemsdtl start apache2 dot service. Hit enter on that, and that's it, done. All right, we have now started our web server. So it's hosting the file nc.exe, and I can enter ifconfig to get our computer address. So in this case, we have computer address of 192.168.0.110. 
So a consumer device can easily open a browser. It could be Firefox, Chrome, whatever the case is. So all they have to do now is to be able to either click onto the link that will bring them to the executable, or in this case, they could enter out the entire address themselves. So of course, in the real world, it will be a domain name like hacker.com. So with that, I hit enter on that. And you can see right in the bottom, what do you want to do with nc.exe? I can, of course, go ahead and click Save As and so on and so forth. And that will allow us to download the malicious file. So with that, let's go ahead and save it. That's it. Done. Very simple step. And we can see right here, of course, Smart Screen Filter reported nc.exe as unsafe. And of course, there are various security mechanisms in place to protect our devices from all these different type of threats. And the job of a hacker is to bypass them. And that brings me over into Command Prompt. So this is the cool and exciting part where you can seriously look like a hacker. So go to bottom left, enter CMD, Command Prompt, hit Enter on that. There are several utility or features out of the box with your operating system that allow you to download files without a browser. So that's beautiful. See, for example, right here, I'm using set U2, URL cache split F, 192.168.0.110 and c.exe. So once I jump back in right here, I can go ahead and hit enter on that, and it sees the following. Set you to URL cache command completed successfully. I can enter the IR. You can see right here, we got the following file, which is nc.exe. So that's it, we managed to download the file. Another option that we have here, it's bits admin. So again, you can see right here, we are targeting the same website address, and now we're saving the file over to a target directory of folder and then giving it a specific file name. So with that, let's go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. And once I hit enter on that, you can see right here, transfer complete. And of course, I can go over to the folder and from the folder, I can see the following file right here, nc.exe. So here we have an Excel sheet that also has the following. So you can see here we have Microsoft Visual Basic for applications. And you can see on the following, we have sub auto open. So what happens here is that it is going to run instructions the moment the file is open up. So this is one of the options where you can leverage an existing application to help us run system command calls that we learned earlier. So here's an example that we can see. So what I can do now is enter call shell followed by say notepad. So this would help us open up notepad so that we are able to launch and open and view many other different information through the Excel sheet. So once I save this, I can click run, and you can see right here, done. Notepad just opened by itself. And you get here by going to the top, clicking under view, clicking under macros, and click view macro. So right here you can see the following, macro name auto open, click add date on that, and that's it. It brings you back to the page I was showing you earlier. Now the question is, can we take this to the next level and say notepad? Can you help me open up a specific file? So in this case, targeting Windows, system.ini. So once you're ready, just go ahead and click run. And you can see right here, we got all this different information. So we managed to open and view a file. Here's more exciting stuff. So we can go ahead and launch command.exe. And I can say, why not let's ping loyliangyang.com. Go ahead and run this, and you'll be able to see the following right here that gets pop up. Or in this case, I can even tell command prompt, hey, why not create a directory called hacked folder in the C drive? So once we're ready, go ahead and click run. And if I head over to C drive right now, you can see the following hacked folder. And now you get the drift. The whole idea is to ultimately use trusted applications to run commands for us. This is another super awesome example. I do a right click, I create a new file. All right, so I can select, say, text document, whatever. I would just go ahead and call it hacker loy followed by BAT extension. And I click yes, I want to change the file name extension. And I do a right click and I click edit. So this will pop up notepad for us. And what I can do here now is to provide instructions so that when someone opens it, it gives us full remote control of the entire machine. So I've written it out and you can see right here, we're using PowerShell and we're going to run following command. And this invoke web request basically goes over into the hacker site, downloads the file, and it places a name as nc.exe. And after which it launches nc.exe to provide command over into the hacker's IP address with a specific port number. So how can we show this? I can go and save this 
I close it, now I jump back over into the hackers box. And what I can do here is go ahead and launch the listener. So this is the part where we are able to wait once the user opens up the file or Excel sheet or whatever the case is, it's game over. Now if I head back over to the computer, I double click on this and I go back over and call Linux right now, you can see right here, we are in. I can enter DIR, I can enter IP config, and I can see all these different details of the hacked machine. I know what you're thinking about. You want me to show you zero day exploits, state of the art techniques and attacks. Yes, I absolutely know a lot of those techniques, but if I show you, I get arrested and I go to jail, and so do you. And that's the problem. Because if I go to jail, there's no more tutorials for you. And of course, you stop learning. You no longer go to Hacker Lloyd's channel and learn everything about ethical hacking, penetration testing, and AWS security and whatnot. And that's it. The whole industry crashes and everyone gets compromised. So it's very important that I don't share a lot of this zero day stuff with you. I show you the fundamentals, I show you the foundation. And then with your creative faculty, you can think about what are the different interesting applications that I can leverage on top of all this fundamental work that you have now learned. So that's why you have to smash the like button as well as turn on notification on this channel.